Hi, my name's Sarah and I'm from One Manchester's customer services team. Now, if you're noticing your heating isn't getting as hot as it should within your radiators, there's a few checks that you can do for yourself before you need to give us a ring and I'm going to show you what you need to do. Right, okay, now the first thing we need to check is the temperature of your radiator. Now, one important thing to note that if it's cold on the top and hot on the bottom, that means you may well have a bit of trapped air. So we can show you how to bleed your radiator. Now, if you've not already got one, you'll need to get yourself a radiator key. Um, one of these can be purchased at a supermarket or a DIY shop for about a pound. Okay, now it's worth getting yourself a cloth or a bit of tissue. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna place this underneath the valve. You're gonna take your radiator key, put it into the valve, and you're going to turn that of a quarter turn anti-clockwise. Now, if there's any trapped air in the radiator, you'll hear a hissing sound. Once you hear that sound, you might see a bit of water coming through. What you then need to do is turn it back off clockwise, take your radiator key out. Okay, now first thing to check is your pressure gauge. If it's showing below one, then you're gonna to need to top it up for a bit. Now, you don't wanna turn the boiler off here. You wanna turn the main supply off here. So if you flick that off. So you now wanna check that your filling loop is connected, which is here. If you've not got one, then give us a call. Now, depending on your filling loop, you may well need a screwdriver if your valve is one of these. If not, you may have a thumb leather where you can do it by hand. Your first valve, you want to open fully. Now, the second valve, what you're gonna do is you're going to slowly turn that on until you start to hear the boiler. Keep an eye out on your pressure gauge and watch it slowly increase. Once it gets to the one, you're going to turn that valve back off and then go back to the first valve and also turn that one off. Okay, now last step, all you need to do is switch your boiler back on and that should be sorted. Now, if you do notice that you need to repressurize your boiler quite often, there may well be another problem and that's when it's time to give us a call.